Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor, and I do have cinnamon in my coffee because that is how I roll. Last night, I sat on my back patio with a fire. I should have sent you all a picture of my little fire I had going. I was, I was sitting around a fire with and watching football games with some friends, and what do you think the number one topic of conversation was <laughs> as XRP shot to... 50 cents. I was watching my phone and I can tell you for 1000% certain I've only experienced what I experienced last night two times with XRP, with, with digital assets in general and crypto. One time was in, I believe, I believe it was Thanksgiving of 2013. I'll never forget it. I was on the back, I was in my backyard. It was dark outside and I was smoking a turkey and there was only one guy in this with me. And we were on the phone giddy because we couldn't believe what we were seeing. The second time I saw this was in 2017, which is the bull run that you all know about. I'm popping a wintergreen lifesaver, by the way. So I've got a wintergreen lifesaver. Think about all these flavors here. A wintergreen lifesaver with coffee with cinnamon in it. See, when you're, when, when we're having XRP prices like this, you can, you can do everything. I mean, shoot. We, we just kind of do what we want, right? <laughs> no, but anyway, I was as giddy as all of you were last night and just staring at my phone. It's kind of, you know, what's weird about when the market gets like this, what's weird about it is you find out that you, you thought that you were nervous when you were buying as as the market was was doing nothing over the last two years and, and you were questioning whether you were right. Is, is, is this what I thought it was and all that? But what's even more nerve wracking than buying those dips when you're not, when you're uncertain about the investment itself. I never was uncertain, but I'm sure many people out there were. If, if you, what's even more nerve wracking is when the market is going crazy like this and you're sitting there thinking, I could lock in my gains at this and this and this. And it, it, it'll drive you even more crazy, but that's the good kind of driving you crazy. So I'll take it. Okay. Um, let's look. I've got a lot of interesting little things that were said and, and little tweets and, and chart and looking at some of these charts and what some of these people are saying. Really fascinating stuff. Third, first thing, DJ Peter Voss, XRP rockets to 50 cents as trading volume reaches new all time high. And then we have this one. David Schwartz was doing a little bit of twe uh, teasing over the last couple of days. I think he 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 says all these things to get he knows that people will, will immediately start saying, "Oh, is he saying the price is going to be seventeen dollars or three fifty? He tweeted this out. According to the Step Tracking app I installed on my phone last night, I only managed seventeen steps yesterday, while today. I've already taken over 350. And so everybody immediately starts pontificating. Well, what is David Schwartz trying to say? It's fun to, fun to cover those. All right. Okay. And then this was from DJ Peter Voss. The Google, these are the, Go the Google trends. The searches for Ripple is up 400% between November 15th and November 21st. I am being called by people I don't even know. I'm getting the, here's what's happening to me now. I'm getting text messages where it's like, um, hey, I've known your brother for a long time. You may remember me. Uh, can we talk? <laughs> that's the kind of, that's the kind of messages I'm getting right now. And of course I say, yeah, we can talk, but I, I don't even realize some of the people that are out there list that have been listening to me for the last couple of years. But what I do know is in my town, there are some happy campers and some of these are old school, older people who have been listening for a long time, um, who already were doing just fine. <laughs> you know who you are out there. Um, okay. Catherine Coley, this is interesting. She tweeted this. Uh, and remember Catherine Coley used to work for Ripple. Now she runs Binance US. 
Wow, XRP surpassed Bitcoin for volume in the last 24 hours. That's a first. Guess y'all figured out our low trading fees save you 1% to 2% on fees per trade versus elsewhere. Then this person says, blink twice if you're a Ripple employee undercover. And she says, hi, Ripple is one of my former employers, just like Morgan Stanley and Silicon Valley Bank. Since last June, I work every day to build the best team and platform to make access to crypto less intimidating for more Americans love what I do. But anyway, the real thing to focus on here is that XRP volume, she says the XRP surpassed Bitcoin for volume in the last 24 hours. That's a first. Now, folks, I've told you all along, XRP is the one and this it's always been the one. This is your first indicator of what's to come. Ultimately, Bitcoin is going to be an altcoin. That's where this ends up, folks. Just write it down. I'm telling you. Bitcoin is going to be the altcoin. And this is when the uh, fire will rain down from the heavens. The Bitcoin people will go absolutely berserk. But look, you just you, there's one thing you can't stop. You can't stop the truth. And the truth is that XRP, and always has been, XRP is faster it's more scalable, it's cheaper, it's all of the things that Bitcoin is not. That's the fact, Jack. And that fact, and I was telling my father, the official father of the Digital Asset Investor channel, just this morning I was talking about that, and I was telling him, I was like, look at the, if you look at the new money that's been coming in this space, over the last 24 hours, it was not a ton of new money, I don't think, that was coming in um, on coin market cap, and I'll show you in a minute. But what was happening was the money was flow, it, the month, the money that was already in was that had, if you, if you remember, Bitcoin's been running up for the last week or two or whatever. But the money that was coming into XRP was being filled. Ultimately, the money is filtered down into the ones that actually have use. I covered that. A guy had written up a tweet like to that effect earlier this week that I covered. That's what's going to happen. Ultimately, the money is going to find its way to the most efficient and the, the digital assets that make sense that actually will be used. That's what's going to happen. Not only that, but the smart money is going to go and find digital assets that, that where they can accumulate more of them. I mean, that's just how I won't even call that the smart money. It's just human psychology to, they will, they will, sit there and look at an 18,000 Bitcoin. So well, are the returns really going to be as good on an $18,000 Bitcoin or are the returns going to be better on something that I can buy thousands of? And I mean, just look at the history, the altcoins, that's where the real action is. Just, just look, look at the history. All right. Um, and then there was this, uh, now I wanted to bring this to, to your, your attention. This was a reply to some tweet. But they said something. This is a, a phrase that I have heard over and over and over and over since I got in this two or three years ago. Since I started this YouTube channel, this is what I've heard. Uh, this person says, I'll be holding on to my XRP. There will come a time when we can no longer buy it. It wasn't meant for you and me. This right here is what I have been told. I have heard that phrase right there. It wasn't meant for you and me. I've heard that phrase from 20 different directions over the last two or three years. And it's, it's something every time I see it, I want to remind you of it because it wasn't meant for you and me. <laughs> I don't think you will be able to buy XRP at some point in the, in the coming years. And I hope they let me keep mine so I can lend it to the world. I want to be a help. Um, and then, okay, here's Fiat Leak, and I, I couldn't remember, if, uh, I think I showed this to some of you yesterday, but Fiat Leak, we're at 43 cents. This thing touched 50 cents last night. It'll be interesting to see what happens, because last night things really started going crazy when they started to wake up over here in, in Japan. It was really a little, little after, it was further into the day, but this is where a lot of the action is going to come from, and it could happen this evening. We'll see what happens. Um, now let's look at coin market cap, do a little refresh here. Let's see what we're at. Okay. 528 billion. Now keep this in mind. This is what I was telling, I was telling a guy on my back patio last night 
And he's like, well, is it, is it too late to buy into this? I said, well, I said, well, there's two, there's two separate. This is the way I described it. I said, look at XRP as, as two separate things. Over here, you have the fact that XRP is, is the greatest digital asset ever created in a new asset class, the first new asset class since the creation of bonds in the 1600s. If you just, and then, and then that's the new asset class thing you have over here. And over here, you have what XRP and Ripple really represents, which is being a bridge currency to the entire world, trillions and trillions of dollars. That's, this is how I, compartmentalize this. But let's say that we were a thousand percent wrong about this bridge currency part, but we're just looking at this being a new asset class. I told this guy on the patio last night, I said, are you telling me that this story ends at $528 billion? You, you can look everywhere in the news now and, it's, and you've got billionaire after billionaire wealth manager after wealth manager who's getting into digital currencies. They're telling you this now. Okay. It's, it's here. So does this story end at $528 billion for all of digital assets? If you believe that not only do I have an igloo for sale in South Georgia, but I will create some other igloos to sell that melt within 24 hours, but they're excellent igloos. Okay. Because this is not where the, this story hasn't even begun. That's what I was telling. And that's just talking about the asset, the new asset class part of this. That's not talking about what I really believe we are 10,000% correct on, which is that XRP is going to be the bridge currency to the world. Okay. And that's a whole, that's a whole nother ball game right there. That's a, that's a three, four, five, digit ball game for XRP. And I'll show you somebody else that said that here in a second. Okay. Um, so let, let's look here. So anyway, I wanted to uh, repeat this again. I told some guys this last night too. Look at what we have here. 43 cent XRP. It's up on coin market cap. It shows 3.72%, but on Fiat leak, it shows 3.12%. What I have learned is that fiat leak is ahead of what coin market cap is getting. So if the, if fiat leak is showing it that not as much up, coin market cap kind of lags fiat leak. It's, just pay attention to that. That might help some of you. Now I wanted to show you all, especially those of you who are just showing up to the party, what has happened this month. Okay, where we were at. Here's the close for XRP. Look at right here around, we were at 23 cents. Let's look at November the 1st. We were at 23 cents on November the 1st. XRP has literally doubled in 21 days. Okay. These are not your father's stock market returns here, folks. This is a whole new paradigm. Okay. And I think that we are about to see the not, I don't know. I wouldn't even call it a bull market. I think we're about to see the, 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 I think we're right now at the very beginning. I think everybody's ready. I think they've been positioning them, positioning themselves for the last two or three years. But I think that the financial system and the, and the people that run this world are ready. And I think that we're about to see something that makes 2017 look like a bad joke. Okay. All right. Now let's look, uh, I love looking at coin paprika, the return rates. I want you to take a hard look at these return rates. I'm refreshing this. Give it one tiny second. Well, if it will refresh, tell me I'm not losing my internet connection. That's going to really irritate me. No, come on. We don't want that. No, I'm wondering if that's me. Or if that's, um, let me stop this. Okay, I don't know what happened there. But here's, this is the coin uh, paprika return rates. Look at XRP right here. Seven days, 58%. 30 days, 69%. One quarter, 50%. One year, 85%. And, and look, this is after we've been in a bear market for over two years, folks. There's, the, the places that this has to go is 
crazy. Okay, now, let's, now I want to show you this before I forget. Michael Arrington, and those of you that don't know, Michael Arrington, this is Brad Garlinghouse, the CEO of Ripple. This is his best friend, okay? I met the guy when I was in Singapore at Swell in 2019. Really big dude. He's like bigger than I am, and I'm a pretty big dude. December the 3rd, crypto people, mark your calendars. No, when when he said, and this guy's not some schlub. This is a this guy's like a venture capitalist out in Silicon Valley, and he's a really smart guy. Started TechCrunch, and he's not just saying this. So, um, the craziest thing that anybody can do, in my opinion, is to not be in crypto over the next month. <laughs> the craziest thing. Now, Joker, who's the one chart guy that I pay attention to. Um, well, actually, I yesterday actually tipped the blockchain backer guy. He's doing a really good job. You should go subscribe to him. He's a really smart guy. But you know what I like even more than the fact that he's smart? He seems like a really good-natured guy. And that's kind of what I'm all about. I like, I like listening to people who sound genuine. And that's, that's my thing. <laughs> um, okay. Joker, this, this guy is smart too. He's, he's a trader out of Australia. He says, to escape fear, you have to go through it, not around it. Scared money parked in stable coins and banks get nothing but devaluation by inflation. Do you think XRP $250, Bitcoin $250,000, gold 14K is a dream? Let it sink in, let, let it sink in a bit. And he's got, I don't, you know, like I said, I don't do these chart things, but, those of you that pay attention to this type of stuff, I think it's interesting, especially when the market's moving to show you these things. And then he, he's retweeting another of his threads here. Fear and greed. I use this chart to counter trade my fear. Let, let's golden ratios talk. Uh, do you see that 0 0.61, 0 0.8 level? Yes, 23 cents. Do you see that 1.6, 1 1.8 level? Yes, XRP is going there. When? 2023, 2025. It is math. Google it. The importance of golden ratios. Basically, what he's saying is that XRP in the next couple of years is going to go to $250. I believe it's going to do that and more. Um, and I, but, but anyway, he, this guy's an interesting guy that to, to follow. So go give him a follow at Kia Crypto. Okay. And then we've got the Crypto Granny. Now, she is also from Australia. And she has a YouTube channel as well. And I've, I've always found her, her stuff interesting, but she is, is calling for a $1,009 XRP. And you, you have to understand her background. She's, uh, my understanding is that she was a trader. Uh, that was her career for like 30 years. And she, so she's no schlub either. She's a very smart lady. Here's what she says. A very simple valuation for XRP on the back of an envelope is this. A total settlement problem in the world, including all markets and people, is 1.4 quadrillion. And this is a conservative, conservative figure. If XRP captures just 10% of this market, the valuation of XRP is $1,009.81 per unit. Put that in your pipe and smoke it, folks. All right. Heyo Seiko Carmona. I love saying his last name. He sent me this. Argentina and Brazil get their own stellar stable coins. Partnership between Settle Network and Stellar should make things easier for the unbanked to send and receive remittances. I've always told you on this channel, I believe that XRP and Stellar are brother and sister, and I own them both. Um, and this is further proof. These are the only two digital assets. Well, they're not the only two. There's one or two others, but these are the core two digital assets that I believe are going to be a part of this new financial system. XRP and Stellar. Write it down. Okay, XRP Bart sent me the volume, uh, these volume charts again. XRP Euro, the volume is going off the charts here. Well, not off the charts, but the volume is spiking big time. And then this one is the, um, the XRP Mexican peso. So you can see what's going on. It's almost like a switch has been flipped. Now, I wanted to show uh, a lot of you that are new here, there's something coming up that you need to be a part of. Uh, I will probably be in the conference. Um, it's December 8th to December 9th. And this company linked to what they do is they have these, these global investor conferences. It's like a Zoom call and you can go in and there's going to be 
they've had billionaires and all kinds of important people, but they, it's out of Silicon Valley and the, there's, you can find out not just about, um, digital assets, but they, they talk about how you can get involved in, in private equity investing on their platform and they private equity in some of these blockchain companies around all of this, including Ripple. And so they, they, you can go and sign up. They have a link. Here's their, their handle on Twitter's at link to Inc. You can also go to link L I N Q T O dot com on their website. I have, I have links to all this in, my, in the description of my videos as well. But I wanted to bring to you, to everybody in XRP land, I want to bring to your attention who's going to be at the conference. Um, there's a lot of people, but this is the guy I wanted to show you. This guy right here, Adam Trademan, is going to be at the conference this time. This is the guy I would like to ask a question to because he, for those of you that don't remember, he's the CEO of SBI Ripple Asia out of Japan. Okay, a very smart guy. And he's the guy that did this interview with um, Thinking Crypto and said this. Listen to this. Guy is is literally Ripple's biggest fan. Like, you know, Kitao san yes. is trying to make XRP and Ripple successful everywhere. Let me give you an example that'll seem crazy to you, but it's actually true. So there's going to be uh, the next World's Fair. Can you imagine they still have these things? World's Fair is going to be in Osaka in like 2025, something like that, or whatever. Wow, they still have those? Wow. Okay. And yeah, I know, right? That's what I said, right? <laughs> it's going, if, if he gets his way, the CEO of SBI, it's going to be, if you go there and you want to buy anything from a, a you know, Coca-Cola to a hamburger, it's going to take XRP. You can only wow. pay an XRP. That's what we're working towards. Wow. Okay? That's just one little example, right? Sure. But more important to that is, replacement for international wire transfers and SWIFT, mm. right? So I'm meeting all the time with these like bankers, central bankers. I met with the head of the central bank from Cambodia last year in December. Mm. Uh, and, you know, they're looking for alternatives to technologies like SWIFT because they want to get out from under the thumb of the U.S. Department of Treasury, which sort of runs the global banking network, right? I mean, it's SWIFT is a Belgian company by definition, but, yeah. you know, it's, uh, you know, th there's a lot of U.S. influence in, in a lot of things in banking, right? Yeah. And so, you know, technologies like that that are legal, uh, like Ripple's tech, are, you know, really attractive to, to a, a multitude of parties. It's not just about things like that. It's mainly about lower cost, better customer experience, lower risk, and just faster, right? The kind of things that people like you and I care about. Right. That's what ultimately we're doing with SVI Ripple Asia is we're enabling like remittance companies and PSPs to send money or individuals to send money back to their families and stuff like that and just have it go faster and cheaper. Right. And the fact that you use Ripple under the hood, they don't need to necessarily know that. Just like you don't know what happens when you swipe a credit card, you know, in France. Right. And it charges your bank in America. Who the hell cares what happens under the hood? Okay. It better just work. It does. Same thing here with this kind of thing. Right. And so. Um, Ripple Asia's business has been growing because Asia happens to be just a lot more progressive when it comes to, yeah. you know, all sorts of payment rails and things of that sort. So, um, the, the, the use cases that make the most sense right now are uh, remittances. So, like mm -hmm. I said, folks sending. All right. So very, in that'll be an interesting guy that's going to be at that conference. So go check it out. Um, now this was an, it was from Coindesk today. Uh, Bitcoin should e essentially be viewed as a massive short position against the entire financial system, even bigger than the big short. I do agree with this. I, I, even though I, I think XRP is the one, Bitcoin is going to do very well. All the boats are going to, all the significant boats in this game are going to rise. Okay. In this thing, you're going to see, and then over time, you're going to see a, a, a lot of them go away and it'll be, it'll be very similar to the way it was in the dot com with, with stocks. You're going to see it. And with the creation of all the dot com companies, most of which were worthless and built on nothing, <laughs> you'll see the same kind of dynamic with digital assets. Now, XRP Bart sent me this and I'm going to finish here. JP Morgan admits, this is from Zero Hedge. JP Morgan admits it was wrong about the end of Bitcoin bull run. Renews $140,000 plus price forecast. Isn't it great how these guys can get away with this all the time? Oh, oh yeah, we were wrong, you know. And meanwhile, they were probably buying while they were saying that it was the end of the bull run. <laughs> That's how these guys play the game. 
I'm a digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe and hit the like button and tell your friends and family that we were right all along and XRP is the one and has always been the one. Thank you for listening.